Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, An Opportunity or a Gift Gone Wrong. Why did they give that to you to begin with? Why did that person give you the opportunity that went wrong? Why did that person give you something that is now nothing more than a headache? Because they no longer wanted it. It was a selfish move. They took their money and they ran. And that opportunity opened up because they weren't about to be paid what you are willing to take for that same opportunity. The workplace has been opened up in various establishments that at one point was closed off to certain ethnicities. But now that it's open, you're welcome to come on in for a bargain basement discount because we're definitely not paying what we once paid. You see, when there is an exodus, history shows us this, when there's an exodus of a certain ethnicity leaving a neighborhood, leaving a workplace, leaving an organization, and you know that place, group, what have you, has a long history of not letting others in. Here's the question, why? For someone, why? And I already answered one question <laughs> when it came to the workplace and that was, well, we can get you for a bargain basement discount, that's why. We can get you because our clientele, the people who are now showing up for service, well, they have different faces now and we need a new face to represent our brand so that we can stay in business, so that we can provide quality service for that ethnicity. Is it still quality service though? Because if we're cutting monies, I don't think that we're providing the same services that others who used to work for your establishment is providing or were, were providing <laughs> past tense. You see, notice the changes compare the way the business was before versus now that you're there. Are you ever going to be able to get it back to those levels? Not if they're not willing to spend that type of money that they want spent with others. No. No. Now let's switch gears. Let's talk about that gift. That gift you receive. Wow, I couldn't believe she bought this for me. I can't believe that he uh, spent his last dollar. Did he or she really spend their money? Or was it a gift that they re-gifted? Is this a gift that, uh, yeah, they found out some things about it after they bought it, but they're going to go ahead, give it to you, right? And then you're going to discover all of the problems that will occur the longer you have it. I love websites like eBay because eBay has all the old stuff, right? A lot of old stuff. If you keep something around for a while, you start to see all the defects. So let's say that I gave you this gift that I no longer want, but it looks practically brand new. And the reason why I no longer want it is because I went over to eBay to see what the future would look like if I kept this. And I found out that this thing is going to eventually have all sorts of issues, but I ain't got no money to be buying you a new gift. So I'm just going to re-gift this one and give it to you. Now, this is where some people's, <laughs> their morals, if you will, their conscience is uh, tested. You're giving this, this gift away and you know that it's gonna be a huge headache for this person later. Hmm. And God knows you know 
Uh oh. Should you have given that gift to begin with? Uh oh. Should you have given that gift to begin with when you know that this is going to be a headache? And let's just say that the person who you gave it to, you really don't like that person very much. Ooh. Or maybe you like that person a whole lot, but you know that person is one of those who gets very impatient. They will freak out. And yet you gave them something that five months from now or <laughs> five years from now, it's going to be a problem. It may even catch on fire. Ooh, wasn't there some stories about some of these products? That product might end up putting them in the hospital. You see, Sometimes you're given this advice, you're given information from people. Let's switch gears. We go from opportunity to gifts to now information. And someone tells you that it's a good thing to do A, B, and C. And in recent years, you know, people were told a whole lot of things they were supposed to do. And even some individuals put God into it. And God's like, I'm not a part of that. I don't even know why they put my name in this. Matter of fact, they should have kept my name out their mouths. <laughs> but, oh, you're going to reap that lie saying God said when you know God didn't, you see. So this information, this advice, and you know that there are reports, you know that there's statistics, you know there's a whole lot of things, but you go ahead and you do it anyway because people say it, because you heard. Because you got a trick or you got a treat out the deal that was so-called beneficial. It helped you. But then what about the person who you talked to that it did not help? Matter of fact, their family is so angry because now they got to take care of that person based on information that you told. Because eventually when people get upset about what's happening, you know blame is coming. And you opened up your mouth and you told people to do things that you should have never told them to do. And now you're reaping the consequences. You know how many people started deleting all sorts of videos, started getting information off the Internet, took their little pictures down of their little cards. Mm, you all know what kind of cards I'm talking about. Yeah, because you don't want us coming back and leaving comments. You see, not those nice ones either. You see, this is why, once again, I got to tell some people, you need to draw near to the Lord because you're having too many moments of disappointment. You are easily frustrated, angered these days because I'm getting tired of people giving me false promises, giving me false hope, giving me some crappy gifts that they no longer want. I'm tired of people telling me about opportunities, but then I get in these establishments and I find out that they pay this one and that one, but then they didn't want that type of money no more. So then they give us barely enough to be able to take care of our responsibilities. So is it really about helping so-called the troubled people, the people who are impoverished, the people who lack opportunity? Is it really about helping or is it really about just making the rich even richer? See, when you catch wind of the truth, Lord Jesus, of what's really going down, you know what you're going to want to do is go to war. I mean, hey, that's history. After a while, people get tired of all these disappointments and upsets and false promises. And no, I didn't know. I mean, they get tired of that ignorance, too. So you couldn't do any research about the product before you gave it to me. You couldn't do any research about the company before you took the opportunity. You didn't know what the history was. Now you mad and you yelling and cussing and complaining. And this is why I keep telling people you better draw near to the Lord and allow him to order your steps before you listen to these flawed men and women telling you one thing, but doing something else, telling you one thing while they run from it. But didn't you like that job? I mean, you used to talk so positive about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a good job or whatever. You want it? Wait a minute. <laughs> well, if it's such a good job. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's some other things that I'm starting to pursue now. Meanwhile, they're not telling you that next year they're going to cut jobs. So they let you in because it's just temporary. 
They're laying people off. See, this was another thing that I learned, especially when you're a temp. You learn a lot of things about companies and how they do their employees. Okay. And all this referral business. Oh, you know, a family member or somebody, you know, who uh, would like this job and we'll pay you X amount of dollars and all this other stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the gravy train, it looks real good until it's no longer any good. And the fact of the matter is, is that we just need to hurry up and make as much money as possible because we're going to be cutting jobs next year. This is a reality. You see, at the time that you're listening to this message, there are people that are so excited about these jobs that they didn't typically see their faces in and they're thinking great strides. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful victory when next year they're going to lose those same jobs. Did you really think that <laughs> the tide has turned for so many companies? There are still racist people at the top. They just know how to mask their racism by coming up with other things to teach those people. I never really liked them. The fact that I'm tolerating them is just because I can't get anybody else for these roles. Yeah, that's a cutting truth. And somebody, you know, some people within your own circle who they talk that way, you see, and you say something like, you better not ever let anybody hear you talk like that. Ah, so what? You know, I mean, you, there's a cancel culture, you know, well, that's why we got you. We got you to go out there and say the right thing. That's your group. That's your generation. If only they knew that my racist grandfather, great grandfather, runs this business and how he really feels about them. And the majority of them, wow, are our clients, are our customers. And now we've got to hire people that look like the majority of them. Wow, times have really changed. There was a time when it was only this group and that group who we used to service. And my understanding is that that group that we now service is one of the toughest, the most difficult to work with. And they don't even spend that much money like previous groups. I hear all sorts of things in the spiritual realm. And God says, and this is why next year, they're not going to make the kind of money that they're going to be able to keep employees. Mm -hmm. and the ones that they do keep they're going to be so stressed because of all of the responsibilities that they're going to have to take on that eventually they quit and down goes the ship big business has been happening for quite some time god says why are you talking about the devil the devil would just keep messing with this and keep messing with that god says i'm allowing the devil the devil can't do anything without my permission Lord Jesus, somebody, you know how this thing goes because you've been at how many companies now? And how many times have you noticed that, wow, the door is open finally and you walked in it and you got your money and then you left. And then when you looked back and you saw how much they were paying new people, you were like, I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad I am out. Mm. So back to those gifts, shall we? Some of the gifts that people have in their households, okay? Maybe you don't consider it a gift because you're not ready to make it a gift to someone. But eventually, you might. It might be something that you sell, give away, and someone else gifts it to someone. Are you going to be honest with all of the flaws, the defects, the issues once again, or are you going to make excuses, cover up, pretend like you never knew? What if God did that sort of thing to us? What if God said the lesson in this life is that 
we're going to close some doors but open other ones but there's going to be all sorts of problems when you walk in and it's going to be the kind of problems that 5, 10, 15 people before you couldn't fix and neither will you and you know all those cool things that you want to purchase yeah every last one of them has a problem a problem that is going to cause you to cuss fuss and act up with your family members yeah might even go to jail because you're going to be so frustrated that you say something or do something and somebody in your household who's not with God is going to want to fight you. Yeah. What if God did that sort of thing? What if God used somebody to give you some information that was a lie, straight up a lie? But you believe it though. Yeah. God doesn't provide any type of warnings, nothing. Okay, this is what some people who are so far away from the Lord is experiencing. Except it's not God. It's not God who's doing that sort of thing. It is all the people around them who are children of darkness serving the father of lies. Whether they know or don't know, that's what's happening. A cutting truth. I can't seem to win. There's a dark cloud over my head. I just want to be able to get to a place where I'm satisfied with the workplace. I'm satisfied with my gifts and somebody's giving me some truthful, honest information, but I can't seem to win. And God, he tries to get through to some individuals. He really does. But you know what happens? People reject because this is brand new, Lord. Come on now. (laughs) I mean, there's nothing out here like it. Or this is something that I've always wanted. And now I finally got it. And the Lord says, yeah, and now your life is turned upside down now that you finally got it. There was a reason why I was blocking it, Lord Jesus. I'm coming where somebody is. There's a reason why God is blocking what you've always wanted with regard to information within, let's say, the family or the workplace. The reason why God blocked certain gifts, you know, whether they're seen or unseen. The reason why God blocked you from getting into certain establishments because now that you're there, you find out that people lie, people steal, people cover up, people skew numbers, people do some really messy things. I used to think, why, wow, Lord, you know, years ago that I'm not best salesman, best saleswoman. Why? I, I want to be the best. And the Lord says, what are you willing to do? And then I looked around and I saw some of the shady things that people were doing. He says, now, now you see what I'm blocking you from? Get out of there and stop applying for those types of jobs. You don't have a heart for that kind of stuff. I didn't put a heart in you for that kind of stuff. Those people who are working know how to work in such a way where they're heartless. That's an industry that a lot of, (laughs) a lot of body bags, so to speak, have been taken off to the morgue. You want that level of money? Are you willing to tell that level of lies? So sometimes you see the blockage that some of you all are experiencing that you're so frustrated and you're like, God's not answering prayers. It is because it is not meant. And I've heard people say that. Well, I guess it's not happening for me because it's not meant. It's not meant. Sometimes we'll say that something's not meant, but it is meant. It's just the wrong season, the wrong day, the wrong job, the wrong opportunity, the wrong gift, the wrong everything because they're coming out with something better or because there's a better opportunity right around the corner or there's going to be somebody who knows a whole lot more information than that person who's giving it to you. So just wait, says the Lord. But it's hard for some people to wait because I need this right now. We live in this time period of right now people i mean they can't even wait for you to make a left turn or a right turn if they're behind you looking for a way to get around you look i'm about to make a left turn 
There's only one car coming in the opposite direction. Must you get around at this very moment? There's barely enough space for you too. You might end up taking my back bumper off. I use that as an example because we got people who God is right there in front of you. And he is going to make a turn. And if you follow him, it's going to be the right turn for you. But instead, you're impatient. You can't wait. You try to squeeze around the Lord. And now you end up damaging your vehicle, your body, your opportunity, your gift. Accepting misinformation. Mm. Rather than receiving the truth. God, he wants to work with some individuals. He says, just wait, I got some more data. Wait, I got some more opportunity. Wait, I got someone who knows something about this. This is going to be some breaking news for you. <laughs> You see, she only got part of the story, but I know people who work for the organization. I know people who can get you some juicy information from top to bottom that'll make your YouTube channel shine. <laughs> you see, but somebody goes, no, but I heard this little piece of information. Yeah. And then they come along and then they end up shutting that information down because you didn't get all the facts. So we want to make sure we do it right. If we're going to be exposing things from top to bottom. And we're not going to talk to people who we know are puppets. People who already had the manufactured script, the narrative. Why would you invite him on your show? All he going to do is <laughs> deflect. Shift focus. Make jokes. Talk real loud. Yell. And you never get down to the bottom of the truth. It's that one who... I'm not a part of any organization. I'm not the top dog. I haven't given my alliances to, haven't taken any oath, but I know some things and I'm in. That's the person that you want on the show. You see, when God is opening up these doors in all sorts of ways, not just in the one way that we see it or the one way that the minister tells you about, because what What's his benefit? Why is he telling you something that has nothing to do with what we're going through right now? Because he took an oath and he said, I'm not going to say certain things. I'm not going to do certain things. You got some individuals that I think of one celebrity who she puts her finger up to her mouth. That's her thing. She's been doing that for years. And she's got the little tattoo with the S-H-H, you know, the shush type of thing, right? Been controlling fans in her own little way for years. A nice distraction. Very pretty, right? Along with so many other celebrities. And meanwhile, while you looking over at what she's doing and how she's moving and grooving and whatever else, you don't see signs, symbols, colors. You don't know what the next situation is going to bring unless you're very discerning, unless you got boots on the ground. You see, the question of why is that celebrity chosen to provide information, to release an album at this particular time, to be in front of masses, you see, you ask these questions, why, why is it that this organization is recruiting who they're recruiting and why not others? Why would this relative or this coworker give me this gift? I mean, this really isn't something that I would want. I don't think I've ever given them any, any indication that I would want something like this. You see, or on the other hand, you did, but why now? It's not my birthday. It's not a holiday season. What do they want from me? Mm, come on. 
I know sometimes we just want to look at things as this is a great opportunity. This is a great gift. You see, this information is a blessing in disguise, is it? Or is there something that that person who is doing all of this knows that you don't know? And no, it's not about paranoia. And it's not about, oh, you're reading too much into things. No, it is about using that brain that God gave you, using your critical thinking skills. I don't trust every email that I receive. I don't trust every comment. I don't trust every person who I pass by. There are times where I don't even trust my own family members. And I say, okay, wh why are you coming to me? Why are you asking me this? There were those who I reached out to, and I'm sure they said, why now after all these years? Because I'm just calling to say goodbye, Lord Jesus. How about that? How about I recognize that I have more years behind me than I have in front of me. And so let's just consider my recent connection to be a goodbye. That way, when I'm on my deathbed, I'm not thinking about you. You see, I already did it. I even sent messengers to let folks know that, yeah, you were on my mind. But I've already asked the Lord. To take me on home. And it's not his time yet. But when it is. And it will be. I already went down my list. You see. So maybe in some cases. The information that somebody is now. Finally after all these years leaking. And maybe the gift that somebody. Finally is given after all these years. I always wanted it. She never wanted to give it to me. But now she is. Lord Jesus, and maybe that opportunity that has finally shown itself to go somewhere, to travel, to live your best life. Maybe it's because God has intention on taking you or someone else out sooner rather than later. You see, somebody just got an answer to prayer. Sometimes people know that they're leaving out of here before the doctor knows. <laughs> Before the diagnosis is in. Because we've done so much. Some of you all, you, you're like the cat, right? Put some boots, nine lives. But death is calling. And what is morbid about that movie is the fact that there are those who they know they've done some things in their lifetime. Okay. And some have recently done their share of things. And the scary part about it is the powers that be, the establishment knows that they just sped up their lives. Lord Jesus, you sped up your life when you got involved in that sport. You sped up your life when you got certain medicines that have certain side effects. You sped up your life. When you got around them toxic people after I clearly told so many of you for over 14 plus years now to stop, but you went on and you did it anyway. And now you got heart palpitations and you got obesity issues and all this other stuff. Why'd you let them people back in your life? And some people who wasn't ready for information, but you dug and you dug and now you finally got the information and now you can't handle it. You see, so you sped up your life. Now you see why sometimes God cuts some people in some places and some things and some opportunities. Oh, I always wanted to work there. Mm -hmm. Now you're working there. Now you see what everybody's going through. Okay. Stress levels are through the roof. There were two companies, very popular companies. If I named them, you'd be like, oh my gosh, girl, you work there. And let me tell you something. Once I worked at those companies, I realized, oh, this is not my cup of tea. No way, no way. Now I see why <laughs> the doors were closed. Because some folks who do heavy research and study, psychologists and scientists and others know that certain ethnicities work out better in organizations than others. Now, that's not about racism. That's just about facts. And my brain was like, ouch, <laughs> that's why that particular mindset takes on that type of job. Got it. 
No, thank you. You see. And so for some of you all, you got ulcers behind forcing yourself to work somewhere that you really should have never been in the first place. But you wanted to prove a point and tell people, you know, me, I was like, I got to prove a point. I got to let people know that I'm smart. <laughs> that was the objective. <laughs> Because, you know, some people, they think because you talk a certain way, you act a certain way that you must be stupid. Right. Uh, yeah, she's dumb. OK, no, I got to make a point. And so I made my point. But how much were you willing to put up with and deal with to continue to make that point? I was like, you know what? Ain't all the money in the world. <laughs> if I got to do all this acting on top of that, you got to act a certain way to be in certain establishments. You see, OK, this is too much. I'm going to sit up here and have an aneurysm by the time it's all said and done. No, thank you. You see, but think about those who came before us and all of what they put up with. Right. I got to be the best. I've got to own a house. I've got to maintain my family. I've got to. And they went into these establishments and they ruined themselves. They weren't much. By the time it was all said and done in terms of communication, <laughs> in terms of love and respect and all of that everything everything was based on the job the job the job the title what i've got to prove i can't let nobody get the best of me i've got to give my 110 20 30 40 percent because i know what these people think about me and they cussed and they fussed and they gave their family hell because they wanted the best of the best and now we got these younger people that saying I'm not doing all of that. I know there's easier ways to make money other than sitting up there driving through all sorts of traffic, cussing, fussing, acting up eight to 10 hours at some place that you really don't want to be in an office or in a cubicle, not me. And they have figured out some very, very good ways, opportunities, stumbled across the right information to get some things done. And no, they're not accepting gifts without knowing something about gifts. You see, they start asking you a bunch of questions. Okay, excuse me. Um, Yeah, I know that this costs a lot of money. Yeah, sure. Because, you know, old school, this costs a lot of money. And um, I heard that this is a good brand. And they whip out that phone on you. And they go, yeah, yeah, I understand it costs a lot of money and it's a good brand. But yeah, um, I took a look and I see that there's some reviews about that. And then in about 5, 10, 15 plus years from now, that's not going to be working any longer. I mean, I'm looking for something that, you know, is doesn't have all these other things on it. Matter of fact, that's why it stops working, because it doesn't need all of these other things like they just just use too many features on this model you know so i think if we wait a little while that next model you know the 10.0 model <laughs> will be a better fit so yeah don't spend up all your money on that so you mean to tell me you don't want it i mean i mean it's nice and everything but it's not really what i want so you mean i gotta take it back it's really not what i want you ungrateful no 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 don't go there it's just not something that is going to work out. Not for me. I mean, you could give it to somebody else, but now that you know what you know about it, I don't think it's good for you to even give it to anybody else. So don't regift it. Just get your money back. You see, that's the one thing I love about this generation. They're going to do their research. They're going to check forums, even if it's not out there in the open for us to just scroll down on that website and see what they say in the comments. They're going to do their due diligence because they don't want the headaches. You see, what did we do back in the day? Mama got this. Daddy got this. I mean, I don't really like it all like that. I mean, it's not exactly what I wanted, but I guess I'll take it because I don't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> you see. No, you do what you can to eliminate some headaches, <laughs> you see. So, wow, 
I've given you some food for thought. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Enema Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share. And thank you so much for your giving. If you would like to give, there are links in the description box. Blessings to you.